In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called calculating an equilibrium constant from a partial equilibrium concentration. So this problem's got kind of a cool twist to it. It's gonna be describing a chemical reaction but not giving us the equation, so we need to write that ourselves and balance it. It is gonna give us some information about some of the some of the molecules initial concentrations prior to equilibrium and then it's going to give us some information about one of the molecules concentration after equilibrium and our goal is to calculate the equilibrium constant. Let's just begin by writing a balanced chemical reaction because we know we're going to need that. We're going to have to read what the problem is telling us. First of all we have sulfur dioxide. If you're struggling to remember what that represents you could just google sulfur dioxide formula and it'll tell you what that is. Sulfur dioxide and oxygen react. Oxygen is O2, and we're going to need to balance this, so I'm leaving some space for those stoichiometric coefficients. These two things react, and they form sulfur trioxide, SO3. Again, you can Google sulfur trioxide if you can't remember how to interpret the name. And we're going to need to make an ice table from this balanced equation. Uh, once we get it balanced, we do need to balance it first. On the left side, we have one sulfur, one sulfur on the right. On the left side, we have two oxygens, plus another two is four, and we've got three oxygens on the, on the right. So we have an odd number of oxygen atoms on the right. I'm gonna put a two in front of that SO3. Now we have six oxygen atoms. I'm gonna put a two in front of the SO2 to balance the sulfurs. Two sulfurs, two sulfurs. One, two, three, four, five, six, oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, oxygen. Looks good. So now that our equation is balanced, let's work on filling in the ice table from the information that it gives us. Again, we're going to have to calculate the molarities, just kind of like other Alex problems, same way. Uh, we have two moles of sulfur dioxide in a 25 liter tank. So that molarity is going to be two moles divided by the 25 liters for the, this is for the SO2. Two divided by 25 is 0 0.08 that's the molarity initial molarity of our so2 then for our oxygen we have six moles in the same 25 liter tank so that molarity is going to be six divided by 25 this is 0.24 molar that's our oxygen and we have no initial amount of SO3. Then it tells us when the mixture has come to equilibrium. So after the reaction has come to equilibrium, the amount of sulfur trioxide is 0.2 moles for the sulfur trioxide. So that is going to be 0.2 divided by 25. And again, this is after it's come to equilibrium. So, you know, maybe we're not totally sure what to do with that number yet. I'm gonna just write it down We'll, we'll fill this in, we'll use this number later. So 0 0.008 molar SO3 after the equilibrium is reached. Let's go back to our ice table and let's fill in our change row. Everything on the left-hand side, I like to make negative. Everything on the right-hand side, I like to be positive. Don't forget that we need those stoichiometric coefficients in there, and then we follow that up with an x. So our change row is minus 2x, minus 1x, and plus 2x. And then at equilibrium, we just do the math in the column. So at equilibrium, we have 0 0.08 minus 2x of the SO2 we have 0.24 minus x of the O2, and we have 2x of the SO3. And our goal is to calculate the equilibrium const constant k from this right here. But we don't know what x is, and we also don't know what k is, which makes this problem a little different than ones we've done in the past. Now this is where we're gonna bring in this information right here. So the problem is telling us that after we get to equilibrium, at the end, when we get to equilibrium, the actual amount of SO3 is 0 0.008 molar, which means that we can use this term, 2x, and also this known value, 0 0.008, to solve for x. So when we get to equilibrium, we have 0 0.008 molar SO3, and we know 
also that when we get to equilibrium, we have 2x SO3. So we can just set these two terms equal to each other. They both represent the same thing, just two different ways of representing it. Again, the actual concentration of SO3 at equilibrium, which is equal to our expression for the concentration of SO3 at equilibrium. We'll use this to solve for x, 0.004. And then we can plug this x value in to the other terms in this equation. So we can say for the SO2, we have uh, our equilibrium expression here is 0 0.08 minus 2x, which is 0 0.004. And that is going to be 0 0.08 minus 2 times 0 0.004, 0 0.004. 0.072 molar. For our O2, the little equation we came up with was 0.24 minus x, and x is 0.004. So at equilibrium, this is 0.236 molar. And then for our SO3, we already know what it is, but if we just want to go through the, the math, we said it was 2x, and x is 0 0.004, which is 0 0.008. So these numbers, we can take back over here to our equilibrium expression, which I never finished writing, and we can fill them in. Let's just begin with the terms of the equilibrium expression. Products over reactants, our product is SO3 raised to the 2, and our reactants are SO2 raised to the 2, and O2. What we're going to do is fill in, in this equilibrium expression, we're going to fill in these actual numerical values for each one of these substances. The SO3 is 0 0.008, and that's going to be squared. The SO2 is 0 0.072, also squared. And the O2 is 2, 0.236. Now we just need to solve the math on this. And it is point, uh, Alex wants two sig figs, so point zero five two.